Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. I'm Patrick Cristiano, your host, the publisher of TheaterLife.com, a website for theater buffs covering all things theater. And I have a special guest today, Antonella Bertello. Uh, Antonella Bertello. I, I didn't do it so beautifully. It's, it's such a beautiful name. Thank you. I wanted to say it really perfectly. Italian, <laughs> although I was born and raised in Peru, and thank you for having me. Uh, she, she's the owner and the proprietor of the Baker House, 1675, 1650, 1650, 1650, on Main Street in East Hampton, which is the most ideal, the quintessential, I think, boutique hotel probably in the world. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little partial because it's here in East Hampton. It is definitely the best in the Hamptons for sure. Thank you. Uh, and thank you again for coming. I, I want to share, we're here with my dog, Truman, because we are dog lovers. Mrs. Truman, here he is. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> and Helen and I met when Truman was uh, 11 weeks old at, at the ARF Walk to the Sea. We did. And now you have a new baby, too. I have That's a new 11 baby. weeks old. 11 weeks old. Her name is Joya. She's a yellow lab. Uh, a female, and um, the name means joy in Italian, and um, she's joining us, our little family, Bella is also uh, another yellow lab, she's three years old, and she has been the craziest and uh, most mischievous <laughs> dog I've ever owned, or known for that matter, but she's, she's a darling, she's just really active, should we say. <laughs> yeah. I'm giving him a little treat, but it was our it was our common bond, the, the dogs, and then you got a new one. It was really cool. And when we were at Arf, uh, and I've always been fond of the Baker. I, I don't know. I you don't probably don't know, but I was at the Baker House very early. You've had it now for 18 years. 18 years. Yeah, and I you had a benefit something something 18 years ago when you first got it. Well, um, we've done a lot of things uh, throughout the years. We're, of course, big art supporters. Uh, we do the, we, we always co-sponsor the um, Stroll to the Beach. I think it's one of the nicest events in the Hamptons, in all of the Hamptons. It gives so you, you one a chance. of the sponsors of that event. That's, I didn't yeah, know that. That's yeah, we, we always do, and we will be again uh, for this October. Because we're, we're, we're going back, and I can't wait. <laughs> oh, when the, the, we have to walk together. Okay. It's just, I, I think it's just such an amazing event because people show up with members of their family, right? All these gorgeous dogs are around. And I think it creates, like it did for us, a special bond among the people that go there, the, the dog owners, that otherwise you don't really get to experience unless you're at the dog park and we're also busy, so it's more difficult to connect. Or at the beach before nine or after six, correct? Which I try to do every day and I just... I do it every day. I'm, I'm at I the beach every day. In the mornings or in the both, afternoons? Both, both. both. <laughs> I, I really try, but... Um, I, My know. dog loves the mornings especially. But t t now tell me, uh, let's go back. You're Italian and Peruvian. Yes, I, I have both nationalities, uh, but I was born and raised in Peru until I was 14. And then and what we, you do, how, how do you get involved in real estate, right? Um, well, well that's, a, that's a really uh, interesting question. Uh, my father and my grandfather on my father's side, well, were involved in real estate uh, forever. They did developments in Peru, um, beach so You grew up around it all the time. I, 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 not only that, like but my father... Grease paint kind of, right? Yeah, <laughs> but my father was very attached to his properties, like I am, to mine. And um, when we were little, my, he would take my brother and I, uh, my brother is about three years younger than me, three and a half, and he would take us on the weekends to see the projects that he was working on. And he said, these are your brothers and sisters for the projects. <laughs> so, you know, that, that's, that's the attachment that we developed towards uh, the properties. It was real family, in other words. Oh, yeah, mm. yeah. And uh, then he branched out uh, from Peru into Argentina, Venezuela, uh, Costa Rica and uh, Miami. So Miami was always Key Biscayne. In, in, right next to Miami is the one, one of the first keys uh, of Miami has always been our second home. So which key is that? Key Biscayne, okay. which is wonderful. It, and it's, it's very funny how you gravitate towards the things that you know. Um, key Biscayne is very similar to East Hampton. It's a small village very much closer to a big city, which is Miami, right? Mm -hmm. It's about a uh, 12-minute drive, 15-minute drive, 
Uh, but you have to go through a causeway, and it's really an island, right? Right. Like connected uh, through a causeway to the main. So it's really easy to get to Miami, though. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. 10 minutes. Well, not 10. Uh, 15 minutes, let's mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a beautiful drive because you're driving. Do you still have a home there, too, now? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. We have a home with a family uh, that we've had. My father bought that apartment in 1976. So it's been a long time. Yeah. And actually, you know, once... Um, I think that, that COVID uh, made us all rethink how we're living and where we're living. So I used to live in the city and out here. So, let's, you see, so you're doing real estate with Corcoran in the city. That's, that's how, you, yes. how you started. And you're, you're buying properties out here. Is that what you're doing? I, I was doing that for a while uh, with a group of investors, and I was the managing partner. Okay. And, Who uh, picked the properties? Did you do it together? Well, we, we did it together. I would go and see most of them, and then we would get together with the partners, and you know, I would show them the selected properties, uh -huh, and then uh -huh, together uh -huh. we would decide which one to go for. And in most cases, there were uh, renovations, uh, God renovations. Uh, did you build places. house? Did you build any houses? Yeah, yeah. We no, no, tell me, how, how, when, when did you stumble upon the Baker House? Well, when we were doing the, invest, the investment property. What year? Uh, this did is you see 2004. It for the first time? Did you buy it the first year? Did, or did, how well did you think about it before you bought it? Uh, we thought about it for a week, I think. <laughs> yeah. uh, we're, we're people that, that pull the trigger quickly. Was, you I, know? The you fill me in because it's, 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 I don't remember now, but how long was it on the market when you said? Well, I think it wasn't on the market for that long. It must have been on the market for about six months. Well, that's a good long know. time. And uh, I think that people were uh, very interested, but were a little scared of, you know, what does it really mean to run a B and B, you know, in the Hamptons? So you were right? talking about your group. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So well, but yes, because I did present that alternative to them, and we were looking at, at, at properties to do the next investment uh, property, uh, and it was uh, we were trying to do a 1031 exchange. So we needed to get a property relatively within Wait, the time you know, limits and so forth. You know, you know how much time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, we all do. I've done a few. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, and uh, I walked in and I saw that beautiful wooden door and I guess my whole European side really kicked in very quickly. And how I could felt, it not? <laughs> I, I fell in love with the property. And then, you know, I, I met the owners, Rita and Gary Ricewick, mm -hmm. uh, at that time. And, uh, you know, they were, they were doing okay. I saw an enormous potential, because um, I am the type of person that does think outside of the box. Uh, but, you know, I, I thought that we could do a lot better with the property. Uh, but, you know, were we going to... How, what, does, what did it mean to run a B&B in the Hamptons? You'd never right? done it before. No, no. But I, I, I said, okay. Well, and none of, none of the properties your father did, they were never a B&B. &B. So, no, so this was like the we first. We did industrial, commercial, okay. uh, strip malls, residential. So it's really a complete departure. Yeah. Uh, which, you know, it is associated to real estate as yeah, well. No, right? no, it's, but it's a departure. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and uh, I called my lawyer. I called my accountant, you know, and my bankers. And I said, okay, well. There's this. What do you think? And so we did a. Uh, now, did, did you did you buy it as your, your individually or as your group bought it? No, actually, I bought it with my ex-husband. Okay. Yes, and since so your group didn't want it because uh, they, they didn't want they didn't like the idea of the bed and breakfast. They wanted more to continue doing the flipping. you know the the flipping mm -hmm. right, and we did quite well with the flipping. Mm -hmm. Right, right. You know the properties that we did. We were caught in the last one in 2008 with the financial crisis, so right. that wasn't too much fun. Right. Um, but at the end of the day, we at least made some money, so it, it, was, it, it was the end result was good. We're talking so much. Let's show the viewers what the Baker House is if they're not familiar with oh, this I would love to. magnificent place on Main Street. John, can we have the, the, the front, the, the Baker House? This is from the rear. Uh, I didn't put any of the front images in, just the back one. This is uh, the uh, infinity pool that we uh, added when we bought it. The, so by the summer of 2005, that pool was already in. Um, because the listing said that there was a pool, but I couldn't see one. 
And uh, I was the, in a pool. It was there, like a lap thing. Blah, blah, blah. There, no, there is a small I, pool I know, I know. in the spa that is fantastic, which is uh, swim right, against right. the currents, right? Yeah. So we have another, with some more images of the Baker House. Let's have them all. Just another picture of the Baker House from the back. And then we have the, car and the carriage house. Let's have that. The next image, three. Now, this you bought only five years ago, right? Well, actually, it's uh, 13 years ago uh, already. My, time, my it's concept of time. The, well, of all of us, time is just flying by, right? You could take it down, John. And but the, uh, but it's, it's, it's on an adjoining property. It's a, it, that, uh, the carriage house used to be the original carriage house to the main house. Right, right. And I didn't know it existed, right? And so one day... Have they gotten separated? And they were, it was an estate that consisted of three properties. And at some point, uh, back in time, it got separated into three. So they, you had the main house, the guest house, and then the carriage house in the back, where the horses and the carriages uh -huh. lived, right, 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 basically. Right. Uh, at some point, and, and it's unclear when, um, the guest house on the third lot burned down, and it was reconstructed in this mansard style. So I, I, I've, I've tried desperately to get some images of what that guest house looked like and so forth, so forth through the library and so forth, I've, and I've never been able to. Uh, the library, the Sampton Library, was phenomenal. They're, they're really, they're lovely. They're, oh, they're, oh, our library is so special. Yeah, and uh, they had so many records and so much of the history because when we were buying the house, we knew that it was part of the historical district of East Hampton Village. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, we wanted to be historically correct. Of when, course. You know, they, naming, make you, they make you too, don't they? <laughs> well, you know, like they give you certain leeway, but, you know, the house, when we bought it, the, the 181 Main Street, mm -hmm. the Baker House, it used to be called the J. Harper Poor Cottage. After the owner, third owner. I, I did a little bit of research. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and he was the one that actually converted it into what it is today. He added the two wins, right? And converted the salt box structure into the Elizabethan Tudor type of structure that it is now. And uh, he's from the, he was from the Standard and Poor family. So many of my American friends were saying, well, you know, in Standard and Poor is such a lovely name, you know, you should, you should keep it. But all my other friends, the Europeans, uh, the Central Americans, the South Americans were saying, because everybody I ended agree. up, you know, calling it the poor house right. or the poor cottage. <laughs> that wouldn't work. That would never be. But so now, how, how many rooms do you have that, that you read? That, that, that you, you five. five. In the main house, it's five rooms. But they're, they're not just rooms. They're all, I mean, you have to go to the website. It's thebakerhouse.com. Is that the it? Bakerhouse1650.com. Oh, ba I keep bakerhouse1650.com. You can go to the website. You can see all the rooms and all the prices and the, the, all the different things that they do. But the rooms are, they're not just individuals. They're, they're suites. And, yeah. Yeah, they're big rooms, uh, especially like eight hundred and fifty square feet. Some of them, some of them are, are that big. Yes. yes, and then um, afterwards, when we bought the carriage house, we kept on asking, we kept on being asked that people wanted bigger and bigger rooms, right? And they wanted to suite off rooms so that their kids could be in one room and they could be in the adjoining room. So we made a couple of changes to be able to 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 make that happen, and then. Um, people want a bigger and bigger suite. So in the carriage house, we have three very big suites. So I live in one of them, and it's just lovely to be able to live there on the premises mm -hmm. because you get to meet a lot of really fascinating people, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. From all walks of all life. I mean, from, you yeah. know, painters to actors to politicians to incredible business people, right? Businessmen and businesswomen. And um, and it's just so much fun to be able, you know, to actually live with these people for a few days. I mean, in some cases, but you, are you only here in the summer? Well, um, I am here a lot. Um, last year, I decided to sell my New York City apartment. I, I, I briefly spoke about that. I think that COVID really made us all realize how and where we want to live. And now, you know, also I have a, a new project that I'm working on with my family uh, called Marina Coast Peru. So, which is a big marina development uh, with apartments, yacht club. Um, now, how long has this been in the works? Though? What, what's it called? 
Marina Coast, Peru. Okay. So you know, we have a little video. Well, f before we get to the Marina Coast review, sure. I just want to show the people because I have a couple of images of, of the pool in the spa. You talked about the oh, little yes, pool. Oh, yes. So let, can we just have the, before we go to the Marina, the Baker House, uh, the rest of the images. This are, is one of the places where we have brunch or breakfast. It's under a 300-year-old wisteria, which is lovely, purple wisteria. And uh, it's... Uh, a fantastic it's place to have uh, the whole grounds are stunning though it's not just this one place it's it's many nooks and crannies all along for it I mean, you know i i don't like it that uh, formal i like it a little loose you yeah. know i feel more comfortable when it's a little bit more relaxed and then we have pictures of the spa i just want to show them the spa john that's the sauna that's so the, i love my sauna <laughs> uh, it's just fantastic and um, we have a steam room with uh, eucalyptus that i absolutely love and then there's and then a the small endless pool that you, you swim against the, the current can we have uh, the, 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 the gorgeous? yeah and uh, the beauty about this room is that when you get a spa treatment you get the whole room you don't get like a little room within the spa you get the whole room for yourself, which is another level of luxury, right? I mean, uh -huh. when I first bought the house, people were saying, oh, well, all the spa experts, you know, if you really want to, you know, maximize income, you should put two rooms on either side, you know, put glass with curtains. And, uh, and I had a massage down there. And I remember opening my eyes and seeing the reflection of the water in the ceiling. And I said, and I'm a massage person. I love massages. Yes, I so I said, you know, and can what? people come? Can, be, can people come to your? You have, you have to be a guest oh, to come to your. You have to be a guest because of the permits, blah blah. blah. Yeah, but you know, there's there's um there's things that can be done, like <laughs> give certificate, or I can gift you a massage, you know. Um, so yeah, but we 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 we've been very very busy with our guests because many of them do get treatments, and then you can also reserve the whole room you know just for your use for an hour or two so a lot of people are doing that and just you know not having a massage or a facial uh we have some of the best therapists in the hamptons because they love to work in the space and i think they, they i think there's most of the people that have been uh, to the Baker House, develop a, a certain love affair with it, you know, a certain appreciation for the place. It's just. Well, I think people that would gravitate to it would be would would, would develop that kind of thing. Just the person that would naturally gravitate to your property is going to develop a love affair with it. Yeah. It just it goes in order. But I don't. I might make sure. I make sure we have enough time. I want to talk a little bit about your your uh, your project in Peru. Oh, uh, uh, because thank you. it's. I mean, it looks really exciting. And we have a little video that kind of, I guess it's a teaser. It, it summarizes a and little it bit. It summarizes the location, what it's about. Let, let's start there, John, and then we'll, um, you'll take it from there and educate us, okay? Sure. Thank you, John.
<laughs> so that's a little bit of Peru. Uh, now, Peru. I have never been to Peru, so educate us a little bit about what we just saw because it's all stunning to me. It is just Peru is an amazingly diverse country, um, and and the people in Peru are very welcoming of uh, tourists, of friends, of friends. So all you need to do is know one Peruvian to have a really fantastic time there, right? And very friendly, very open people. And um, we, have, uh, we have the desert, we have the Pacific Ocean, we're in the Pacific Ocean, miles and miles of ocean. And um, the land that comes from the ocean up is desert, except for the valleys. Wow. So you have the desert and then it starts going up to the Andes uh, the Andes Mountains, so you start developing the Sierra, right, the Andes, and then it goes all the way up where you have some of the highest mountains, and then it goes down to into the Amazon, so you have uh, uh, all the way to the true Amazon. So that means that we have uh, most of the climates in the world, most of the foods in the world, uh, most of the vegetation, flora, and fauna. Right? And what, what, what's the weather like? The it depends on what region you are. In the north where we have the project, the weather is fantastic year-round. Uh, we don't have any storms, no. Does it have a change of season or it doesn't have a no, change? No, not really, not really. The only change is that during um, your winter, our winter here, it's our summer down there, and for about two months you could get a couple of hours of rain per day. Mm -hmm. So it, it's really a beautiful place, and it, it was discovered by um, surfers, like most beach towns, they, they begin <laughs> they with surfers, right. and then they develop, excuse me, they develop into these resort areas, right? So that's is, that is what's happening. Um, there's um, very close to us, there's a place called Cabo Blanco that um, the Rockefeller family actually developed years ago in, in the 50s, um, and they call it the Cabo Blanco Fishing Club because we still have, uh, Peru still holds the record for the largest black marlin ever caught. How and big was that? It was 1,560 oh pounds. God. I mean, like, <laughs> a, 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 a one fish. Humongous. <laughs> and we hold the, the world record for men, fisher men and fisher women. I don't know if that's how you say it, fisher woman, but you know, both world records. The largest black marlin ever caught by a man or a woman, both are held by Peru. Now it's catch and release, like, you know, of course, to protect the species and mm -hmm. so forth. Um, and uh, we form an association in Peru with uh, Pacifico Adventures, who, and we're trying to create the, this area in front of our project, uh, a marine reserve, right? And then we are working now with uh, International Sea Keeper Society. International what? Sea Keeper Society uh -huh. here in the States. Um, they are phenomenal in what they do. They they try to take care of the oceans, educate you know the younger generations as to how to take care of the oceans, and uh, they have these amazing programs um, on several different explorer yachts and so forth, uh, where they are constantly measuring different metrics of the ocean in order to. Fascinating. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's fascinating. They do a, a great job. Fascinating. So then your project, what you're, you're developing, condo, what is it, condominiums? What well, is it? it's a, an inland marina, mm -hmm. uh, of which there are not too many in, in South America. Actually, there's only one additional one in for, for large yachts, uh -huh. super yachts and mega yachts, all the way in Chile. And uh, then there's, uh, there's really not much. I mean, there's a few... In, in Central America, but there's nothing on, on the coast, right? There's like tiny little ones that are not really for the mega yachts. And there's been a tendency also uh, accentuated by COVID of people buying larger and larger boats, right? So when you buy, but if you, if you have a place on the yacht, you have also got an apartment or something like that? Well, there's a marina, so uh -huh. there's also apartments that we're selling. We've already sold about 85% of the apartments mm -hmm. that we released. Uh, there's a yacht club, there's going to be a marina village, and then we're going to have a strip center along the Pan American Highway. We have more than a kilometer of uh, beach, oceanfront beach, right? Oh, fabulous. So it's, it's going to be really fantastic, and the, the marina is going to have over 330 slips for boats up to 328 feet, which are the big, big boats. 
Yeah, and one thing that's really important to one mention. One more will be finished. What's the anticipated? We are hoping. Date? We are hoping that it'll be the third or fourth quarter of next year. Very good. Yeah, we're we're almost out of time. Uh, I, if you want to learn more about the Baker House, is the Baker House eighteen. 1650, <laughs> Bakerhouse1650.com. And what, what's the next thing you have planned at the Baker House? Well, we're going to be doing quite a few very interesting things. Uh, we have an event with Maiden, uh, which is this sailing boat that is coming. Um, it's usually based in England. And they have a foundation called the Maiden Factor, where basically they teach young girls um, they concentrate on the STEM program, so science, technology, uh, engineering, and math. And, and when will this be? What's this will be on August 16th. Uh, August 11th, uh, we have, uh, you should bring uh, Truman, uh, we have um, a cocktail party to benefit the New York City Second Rescue um, organization and they do amazing amazing work and uh, we have a few other things planned so we're well, still is there, can you find it on your website too very soon we're putting that up uh, we're also we'll be on the Baker House website yes so you, if you want to see what events. events they might be doing there'll be events that will be listed at the Baker House 1650 oh the one coming up if anybody's interested in dancing is um, empowered uh, movement with dance body and that is uh, July 19th July 19th empowered movement yeah empowered I love movement. empowered movement I'm yeah. all for that you're welcome dance, dance first think Let's later <laughs> thank you thank you so much thank, thank you, you. It's, it's been a pleasure, pleasure having you thank you